Thank you. So I will present you our approach to reverberant speech separation, and this is actually not data-driven. We assume a scenario when small microphone array is deployed in fixed uh, reverberant environment and several speech sources are active simultaneously. So the microphone picks up not only this direct path uh, signal, but also reflections and reverberation. In many applications, for example in ASR, you would like to not only separate the sources or maybe extract the, uh, this direct signal, but also remove uh, these reflections and reverberation to perform further processing. So in single source uh, reverberant audio, the common approach is to use some linear prediction based methods, for example, weighted prediction error. And these methods assume uh, that the microphone signal consists of this early and late component. And this late component can be removed uh, with the linear prediction based uh, filter. Uh, however, uh, these coefficients of this filter are very hard to obtain in uh, presence of several speech sources that are active simultaneously. So we would like to first separate the sources and then mm, re remove the reverberation. The source separation, for example, can be obtained using multi-channel linear filter with the parameters being R, that is spatial covariance matrix, that is responsible for the phase dependencies uh, between the microphone channels, and V is the uh, spectral variance uh, or power spectrogram for each source. These parameters can be estimated under the local Gaussian model. Mm, it assumes that the microphone mixture is a sum of uh, spatial image of sources and each of these spatial, spatial image. So spatial image is basically uh, speech as captured by the microphones if no other uh, speech would be present. And uh, these spatial images are distributed with uh, complex Gaussian distribution. And then we can estimate the parameter using, for example, EM algorithm. Uh, actually, this uh, power spectra V are further uh, factorized uh, with non-negative tensor factorization model. And uh, the key advantage of this model is that it can, uh, th these algorithms are able to estimate this power spectra even for small microphones array uh, and without any training data, and they are very versatile. However, in presence of high reverberation, uh, it is very hard to obtain accurate estimates, so we would like to first remove the reverberation and then uh, perform the source separation. So we basically end up in the situation when we struggle to remove reverberation with uh, several speech sources, but we also struggle to separate the sources with rever reverberation. So it is kind of chicken and egg problem, and uh, our solution is uh, like fried chicken, so we mix together the separation the reverberation. So we propose the three-step approach. First, we use uh, initial reverberation with multiple input, multiple output weighted prediction error method. It is able to remove small part of reverberation, but also it preserves the phase information of microphone channel, so it allows for further processing. Next, we estimate the filter parameters with subsource-based expectation maximization algorithm with multiplicative update and localization pr prior. I will uh, tackle this uh, in next slide. However, let's just say that this algorithm is robust to reverberation and it is able to estimate direct and reverberant component for each source. And uh, finally, we perform reverberation and source separation uh, jointly by applying the proposed subsource weighted filtration. Now, what are these subsources? If we assume that uh, the spatial covariance matrix that is responsible for phase dependencies between the microphone channel can be represented as a product of a full rank mixing matrix with its Hermitian, we can introduce these subsources in a number equal to the number of microphones for each source. And the subsources share the same spectral variance within the source. So for two microphone case, we would have two subsources for each source. And these subsources have the same power spectrogram, but they differ in uh, their spatial properties. So the mix example mixing matrix for two microphones would, lo would look like this, that the relative transfer function for the first subsource is the first column and the second column is the RTF for the second subsource. Now, because we want to estimate uh, this early and late component, we designed this Gaussian localization prior. 
the diffuse late reverberation cancels out on average, so it is visible only in the covariance of the prior. It can be modeled, for example, with spatial coherence matrix. And uh, the mean of the prior, because we, we want to direct sound to concentrate only uh, on the first subsource, so the entrance of the mean of the prior for the other subsource are just zero matrix. Uh, these parameters can be then estimated as a mode of posterior distribution, and uh, this is log likelihood, negative log likelihood function, but um, maybe just say that the uh, mixing matrices are updated with closed form solution and the power spectra are updated using uh, multiplicative update rules. Now with the estimated parameters, we can apply our proposed subsource weighted multi-channel Wiener filter, and it differs from the standard uh, filter by this diagonal matrix lambda that contains coefficients that controls the contribution of each subsource. So, for example, we can set this first coefficient to 1 and the other to 0 uh, for the two microphone case, and it removes the second subsource, so basically we aim to remove reverberation this way. We also can do opposite thing that can be useful, for example, for some reproduction systems. And we also can just uh, set every coefficient to one and that end up with standard multi-channel linear filter. So uh, we performed experiments to assess these methods on two data sets. The first was created using simulated uh, impulse responses with the reverberation times ranges from 300 to 900 milliseconds. And the second one uh, was created using the recorded uh, input responses, and the reverberation time was 360 and 610 milliseconds. The clean speech source signals were, were taken from TIMID database, uh, and we measured them in pairs, so uh, we end up with total 350 sample pairs for each of the reverberation times. We used uh, standard uh, separation measures, so uh, SDR is basically higher the better. And as the reference signal, we use these direct path signals. And uh, as a reference, we used a standard multi-channel linear filter with parameters estimated by this algorithm I just uh, described briefly. Mm, so it was like a zero dB improvement for all experiments. And then we tested proposed subsource weighted MWF in two scenarios. Uh, in first, we set the coefficient for the second subsource to zero, so we basically remove uh, the second subsource. And to in the second case, we set it to 0.1, so we allow a little bit of uh, the second subsource uh, into the uh, image source estimation. And all three methods was also were also tested with uh, weighted prediction error preprocessing. So these are results for the first data set. As you can see, uh, all of the tested methods yield improvement over the standard uh, algorithm. Uh, that was our reference. Mm, the sole use of weighted prediction error allows for better estimation of parameters. So, uh, sorry. So as you can see, maybe uh, here, this is around uh, 3 dB improvement of, in terms of SDR for all of the reverberation times. However, we can observe that in terms of SIR, so it's a source to interferer ratio, we can observe decline alongside the rising reverberation time. So uh, it shows that uh, weighted prediction errors struggle to achieve the reverberation in case of overlapping speech and the further the reverberation is needed. Also, the sole use of the subsource weighted uh, multi-channel linear filter denoted as MWF0 or MWF0. 0.1. It's similar results and results in 3 dB improvement in terms of SDR for uh, for the highest reverberation time. And finally, uh, this uh, this final version, that this full uh, three steps approach, yields uh, improvement in, in terms of SDR five and a half for the highest reverberation times. Uh, note that. Uh, in terms of SAR, we also uh, didn't introduce a lot of artifacts, uh, any additional artifacts actually, and even uh, it's a little, we can see a little improvement here as well. So these are uh, results for the recorded input responses, and we can see uh, the general conclusion are the same. Uh, however, 
we can observe that the weighted prediction error yields biggest improvement here uh, compared to sole use of the substrate weighted uh, filter. Mm, and we attribute this to fact that uh, these recorded uh, input responses uh, declined very rapidly. So they were like there, there were no uh, high energetic early reflections. It was very damped. So probably this uh, linear method was able to better uh, remove this uh, reverberation. And also the best results uh, were obtained uh, with the mm, with, our, with the version that uh, we apply a little bit of second subsource, and this is more robust version, especially for low reverberation times. Now to co conclude, we proposed three-step uh, three-step algorithm to perform jointly separation and the reverberation. Um, <clears throat> this initial weighted prediction error-based reverberation helped to obtain uh, good estimates of model parameters. Also, uh, this reverberant signal component is actually successfully primarily estimated as the second subsource by the estimation algorithm. And the proposed subsource weighted multi-channel linear filter is able to perform joint reverberation and separation. Mm and improves the results. Um, note that uh, this is not data-driven approach, so it can, uh, it can be used blindly and it does, not, uh, it does not matter if the sources are speech or instrumental and the number of sources and microphones uh, as well can be different. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. We are nicely in time. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay, so uh, I have one question. If you could turn back to slide number seven, if possible. Okay, this so, one. So, yes, thank you. So, uh, so far I understand uh, you assume that each source consists of several subsources, yes. and each such subsource um, is actually a point source because it is represented by uh, one vector of the mixing matrix A. And so, my question is how many subsources uh, do you assume? It seems that you assume regular number of subsources so that the mixing matrix is square, is it? Yes, actually, yes, the mixing matrix uh, is square, so we have we can assume only uh, the number of subsources must be equal or lower than the number of microphones. So for two microphones, we can assume only uh, two subsources. So the second subsource is actually resultant of mm -hmm. for all this reverberation. Okay, and this. Uh, fact that uh, the mixing matrix is square is for mathematical reasons. I is it for tractability or...? Uh, well, actually, uh, I think we could actually use the, the lower number of subsources, mm -hmm. but, but it's better to use as much as you can. You, you, you cannot use more mm -hmm. than because of mathematical reasons, yes. Mm -hmm. And my second question is more uh, important, I think. <laughs> uh, this means that uh, you assume that the source consists of several point sources, and one of them is actually the most interesting one because it's direct path signal. And in blind cell separation, the order of, of components is, is random. And your method is selecting weighting, is, is introducing weighting into the multi-channel filter in order to obtain only the direct path signal in, in the best case. So how you recognize which of these subsources is the direct path source, subsource? Okay, so basically we assume that the localization is known of the sources relative to the microphone array. However, it does, doesn't have to be accurate, even if you have big localization error, the algorithm is able to uh, to move towards the right di direction by itself, but you would need to do just more iterations. And we so that's pretty much enough, I believe, because uh, this direct sound or, or with maybe some early reflections, but usually early reflections are also wanted. Uh, so they are high energetic, so these main subsource will move towards 
them. And uh, the reverberation is actually, uh, because of this coherence matrix, the, these lower low energetic uh, reflections will move into the uh, other subsources. Okay, so, so you select or you recognize the important subsources according to the energy. So yes, I would say so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'd like to give chance uh, to the audience to <laughs> raise another question. I can ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so recently there have been several works on convolutional beamformers that tackle joint separation and their reverberation. So is this like alternative to your approach or could they be combined somehow? So, so basically this uh, convolutional uh, beamformer proposed by Nakatani, if I remember correctly, uh, they are actually just this final step, like the filtration, and they have to estimate the parameter as well. And I believe that uh, Wiener filter is much stronger, especially for small microphone arrays. Like you have only uh, two microphones, you need to use these uh, power estimations and I didn't check it. That's something that actually I'm working now on, but uh, I believe that uh, this method will achieve better results, at least for these small microphone arrays. Okay, thank you. And maybe on a similar note, you mentioned the data-driven approaches. So it's quite popular today to combine model-based methods with data-driven approaches. Can you imagine extension in this direction? Yes, I'd probably go that way. Uh, it's just the beginning of the studies now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We still have uh, time for a short question. So if there are no questions, we thank the speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you.